welcome back to the second part of the video on physical significance of antenna directivity in this video i have used nec simulation software to explore directivity and to define beam width i have created two different models of the dipole antenna one of a single dipole antenna and another as the array of the dipole antenna with the help of these two models we'll try to explore more about the directivity and we'll also define what is beam width now this is the rectangular coordinate system this is x axis y axis and this is the z axis and the dipole antenna is placed along z axis and it is excited with a source now let us see how does this radiate in open space this is the radiation pattern or three dimensional radiation pattern of the dipole antenna you can see that the radiation pattern it comprises of multiple colors and every color has got different values here this pink color has got a value of 2.13 and this is the largest value and this represents actually the directivity of the radiation pattern so you can say that the directivity of the dipole antenna is maximum in this pink region now having maximum directivity means what so it simply means that if the antenna is radiating then majority of the power will be confined in the pink region whereas in the other region the amount of power radiated by the antenna will be lesser for example if you consider the yellow region its directivity is minus 0.4 which is much much smaller as compared to the directivity of the pink region so the power radiated from this yellow region will be much much smaller as compared to the power radiated from the pink region now if i change the observation plane that is if i consider xy plane so you can see that the circumference of this radiation pattern has got similar color it is pink in color and pink color it has got a value of 2.13 dbi it means the directivity of the dipole antenna in xy plane is uniform wherever you go either you go upside left side downside or on the right hand side the directivity of the dipole antenna is not going to change it means that this antenna is going to radiate equally in all direction but in xy plane only now if i change the plane of observation that is if i consider other plane this is z axis x axis z axis y axis it means that if i analyze the radiation property of the same antenna in zx or zy plane then the radiation it comprises of multiple colors it means that the directivity of the antenna is not going to remain uniform for example in xy plane the directivity is maximum it is 2.13 dbi but if i go upside or if i go downside towards the antenna then the color changes that is the directivity of the antenna is going to change here i refers to the isotropic because the radiation behavior of the dipole antenna is measured with respect to isotropic source that's why i is involved here now to have a better understanding of all this discussion let us consider two dimensional radiation pattern of the same antenna so i will start with xy plane once again that is a horizontal plane so here also i will change the plane now you can see that in xy plane the shape of the radiation is circular in nature and wherever you go or whichever angle you select the directivity is going to remain same it is 2.13 dbi but the moment i change the plane of observation then you can see that there is a significant change in the radiation behavior of the same antenna now this is xy axis and this is z axis so it becomes zx plane or zy plane so other than xy plane you can see that there is a significant change in the radiation behavior of the antenna the directivity is maximum along xy plane or you can say at 90 degree but at other angle the directivity changes so any antenna which radiates equally in all direction but in a single plane is called as omnidirectional antenna so our dipole antenna is actually omnidirectional in nature it is not isotropic in nature because the property of the isotropic antenna is that it radiates equally in all direction irrespective of plane 
but dipole antenna is going to radiate equally but in a single plane so in our case that plane is xy plane because the antenna is along the z axis now let us define beam width beam width is defined as angular separation between two 3 db points in a radiation pattern now let us understand what is the significance of 3 db points 3 db point is an angular location on this radiation pattern where the directivity drops by 3 db with respect to the maximum available directivity so we know that maximum directivity is available at 90 degree and it is 2.13 db so a 3 db drop is nothing but subtraction of 3 db from this 2.13 dbi which is nothing but minus 0.87 dbi so let us find out where this minus 0.87 dbi exists or at what angles this minus 0.87 dbi exists so we'll go upside that is somewhere here now this figure is very close to minus 0.87 because you cannot have the exact figure so we'll compromise with this minus 0.97 dbi so this is one of the 3 db point and it is available at 50 degree angle so there is a separation of 40 degree from this 90 degree that is xy plane and similarly there must be one more 3 db point below this xy plane so you can see that at 130 degree once again you get another 3 db point which is minus 0.99 db and it is close to minus 0.87 dbi so this is the another 3 db point and it is once again at a angular separation of 40 degree so total angular separation between two such 3 db points one which was available here at 50 degree and another which is available here at 130 degree so total angular separation between these two 3 db points is 80 degree so you can see that beam width for the dipole antenna in xy plane is going to be 80 degree now we'll move to the final model of the antenna there is nothing but the array of the dipole antenna so you can see that this is the dipole array and it comprises of five simple dipole antenna dipole 1 dipole 2 dipole 3 dipole 4 and dipole 5 this antenna is designed to work at the same frequency for the sake of comparison with the help of this model we'll try to answer a few of the questions like is there any relation between beam width and the directivity of the antenna and in what way an omnidirectional antenna can be more directional in nature to answer these questions we must have a look at the radiation behavior of this dipole array so this is the three dimensional radiation pattern of the dipole array you can see that this pink color has got a value of 9.65 dbi so here we can say that the directivity of the dipole array is very very large as compared to the directivity of simple dipole antenna which was 2.13 dbi in earlier case now let us have a look into the xy plane so you can see that in xy plane the shape of the radiation is circular in nature and color also is uniform so we can say that the dipole array that also is omnidirectional in nature because it is going to radiate equally in all direction but in xy plane now to explore it further we can take the help of two dimensional radiation pattern of this antenna so this is the two dimensional radiation pattern of the same antenna but in xy plane so you can see that the directivity is uniform in xy plane whichever angle you select but the moment you change the orientation so there is a significant change in the radiation behavior of the dipole array still the directivity is maximum at 90 degree but as you move away from this 90 degree angle then there is a rapid change in the directivity of the same antenna now let us find out the beam width of this antenna so to find out beam width we have to subtract 3 db from the maximum available directivity so it is 9.65 minus 3 db it becomes 6.65 dbi so if i click it here so this is one of the 3 db points and it is at 85 degree angle another 3 db point is at 95 degree angle so you can say that the beam width of this antenna is 10 degree which is very small as compared to the 80 degree beam width of the simple dipole antenna now we are in a state to answer the first question that is is there any relation between beam width and the directivity of the antenna 
So here you can see that the directivity of the dipole antenna is very large, which is 9.65 dBi, but the beam width is very small. So it means that if any antenna is having larger directivity, then it must have a very narrow beam width. Second question was, in what way an omnidirectional antenna can be more directional in nature? So for that, we need to compare the two radiation patterns, that is, radiation pattern of the single dipole antenna and the radiation pattern of the dipole array. So here you can see that this red one is the radiation pattern of the simple dipole antenna. We'll begin from the XY plane. This is the radiation behavior of two antennas in XY plane. So you can see that both the antennas they are omnidirectional in nature because the directivity in XY plane of both the antennas they are same. For simple dipole antenna the directivity is 2.13 dBi and for dipole array it is 9.65 dBi. But there is a drastic change in the radiation behavior of both the antennas in ZX or ZY plane. So here you can see that both the antennas they are having maximum directivity at 90 degree angle that is along XY plane. But since the simple dipole antenna it has lesser directivity so it must have a larger beam width which is 80 degree. So the first 3 dB point is at 50 degree and the second 3 dB point is at 130 degree. So you can see that the simple dipole antenna because it is having smaller directivity it is going to confine its majority of the power in a wider angle that is 80 degree angle. But if you look at the dipole array, so its maximum directivity is 9.65 dB and the beam width is 10 degree angle. So here we can say that the dipole array is going to confine its majority of the power in a very small angle. So finally we can conclude that even though both the antennas are omnidirectional in nature, but the dipole array is much more directional as compared to the simple dipole antenna because it is going to confine its majority of the power in very small angle. This is all about the directivity and beam width of an antenna. Thank you for watching this video.